Peter says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are suffering Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, a criminal, or even as a mischief maker. Yet if any of you suffers as a Christian, do not consider it a disgrace, but glorify God because you bear this name. For the time has come for judgment to begin with the household of God. If it begins with us, what will it end for those who do not obey the gospel of God? Welcome back to my channel and to our third and final video and blog post in our First Peter series. As I was struggling last night to work on everything homemaking, to get everything clean and organized, I realized something, I can't do it. I can't do it alone. Lord, I need your strength. And this morning, believe it or not, I felt this overwhelming amount of joy and motivation. And so I decided I'm going to go to my free Homemakers Helping Hand Planner, print off a few pages that I wasn't using before, try them out, and really focus on getting my strength, my energy, my encouragement from the Lord, from prayer every single morning, and then using that, using all of that good from God to serve others, to do my job. I just pray that I can reflect the good that God is giving me, all of the blessings, all of the love and mercy towards others, towards my family. When I was praying about getting strength from God to get everything that I needed done, I also began to pray for my family's safety and health. And as I was doing that, I really heard God say, how are you helping them? How are you nourishing them? And it got me really inspired, really motivated to look into what food groups my kids are supposed to have every meal, how many calories they're supposed to take in, and more specifics on the amounts of greens and grains and dairy they're supposed to be getting. So I actually printed off some pages. I put that in my binder as well. And then I have also been going through my Psalms for Suffering workbook Psalms for Suffering is a mini Bible study that goes through 15 Psalms to really help you understand your purpose for suffering, to be encouraging to you, to bring you closer to God. I actually wrote it during suffering myself, during some really dark times that I have been going through. And I just prayed that the Holy Spirit would use me, use my situation to speak to you, to speak to anyone who works through this workbook or reads it. You can get the digital version for $1.99 or the hard copy book for $14.99. I will say that if you don't have an EcoTank printer or a printer that is efficient, it is honestly probably more cost worthy to buy the physical book than to try to print 68 pages. Jumping back to 1 Peter chapter 4, we are going to finish with verses 18 and 19. It says, And if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinners? Therefore, let those suffering in accordance with God's will entrust themselves to a faithful creator while continuing to do good. Let these verses convict our hearts more than ever. And when I say our, I mean mine. Think of the persecution the first Christians encountered. Now compare that to the persecution you personally have faced. Have you ever been persecuted, truly persecuted as a Christian? What does that tell you about the amount you share your faith? Jesus encounters pain coming from all sides. His close friend betraying him for money. The people he loves running and hiding, leaving him alone, abandoned. He's mocked, falsely accused. He hears constant slander and gossip. He's brutally beaten. His few possessions are gambled for. He's physically exhausted and thirsty. He's slowly suffocated. Every possible hardship was poured out upon him. And how did he respond? How did he respond? He allowed it to happen. He took it for you. 
and for me and for everyone who is awaiting their judgment. He did not fight back with words or physically. He did not defend himself or use his godly powers to escape it. He endured it willingly and continued to love us throughout his entire suffering. Let us all memorize verse 17 and remember it when we are faced with situations that we are called to defend and proclaim our faith. Yet if any of you suffers as a Christian, do not consider it a disgrace, but glorify God because you bear this name. Verse 18 is also a good reminder for us to be bold. If it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinners? Going back to 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 18-25, through 25, it says, Slaves, accept the authority of your masters with all deference, not only to those who are kind and gentle, but also those who are harsh. For it is a credit to you, if being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed for you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and the guardian of your souls. Jesus has set the stage for us in our attitude of suffering. Peter reminds us in these verses that if we have done what is right and suffered for it, then God will give us his approval. We look at how Jesus was treated. When he was mocked, he was silent. When he was beaten, he endured it and he didn't fight back. When he was questioned, he didn't defend himself and try to win people over or speak harshly towards them. He spoke truth and accepted the fate of however his adversaries were going to react towards him. Just like in Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 through 42, Jesus is teaching us not to retaliate. He is teaching us not to respond back in an unkind and unloving way. Let him be our example for how we are to act towards others. Jesus entrusted himself to the Father, whom he knows will judge everyone accordingly and justly. He doesn't try to get even or seek revenge. No, he leaves the judgment into his Father's hands. This is a great example for us to remember. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8-22, through 22, it says, Finally, all of you have unity of spirit, sympathy, love for one another, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil or abuse for abuse, but on the contrary, repay with a blessing. It is for this that you were called, that you might inherit a blessing. For those who desire life and desire to see good days, let them keep their tongues from evil and their lips from speaking deceit. Let them turn away from evil and do good. Let them seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you do suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once and for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former days did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water. 
and baptism, which this prefigured now saves you, not as a removal from dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Think about all of the sins that would be avoided, shut out, and silenced if when we talked to or looked at someone, we unified our spirit with theirs, we approached them with sympathy instead of judgment, if we humbled our thoughts and our mind from boastfulness, pride, and envy, if we didn't harden our hearts due to judgment or selfishness, but rather expressed nothing but love, if we let verse 8 change our lives, think of number one how we could easily approach anyone or be approached. Number two, how our responses would become uplifting, helpful, spirit-driven. Number three, how our focus would be free from self-centered motives and ambitions. Number four, how we would use our time, talent, and treasure. And number five, how we would see each person as someone Jesus deems so special that he died for them. There is no better way to end our study on 1 Peter than to pray 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 7-11. through 11. Cast all your anxiety on Him, because He cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist Him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering and after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. I highly recommend memorizing this scripture passage when you are encountering suffering. Truly reflect on the verses and relate them to your life and situation. Know that you are not alone. As Christ suffered for you to be your example, he also walks alongside you every moment that you suffer. He sees every tear, hears every cry, and feels every pain and emotion that you go through. Pick up your cross and follow him daily. Always remember, Jesus suffered, so we are also to suffer. We suffer in order for Jesus to bring us closer to him. Thank you for coming along with me as I did some homemaking. You can find the blog post to this video as well as the other videos and blog posts to the first Peter series down in the description box below or on my website. Thank you so much for watching. Always remember, when you suffer as a Christian, think of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. His wounds heal us, calling us to obedience and to share in his suffering.